what's up this is the last video uh, of this week and I know I won't be doing this much uh, forcing myself doing videos anymore just cuz uh, yeah Yeah, cause I just want to, um, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, this one is worst game of truth or dare ever, the same thing, no, different title, anime stories, my story animated, and, uh, yeah, let's watch it. The time I ended up in hospital from a game of truth or dare. Hey there, my name's Kyle, and I want to tell you about the time I went to my first college party and ended up in hospital as a result. It happened during my first year at college, when a couple of guys from one of my classes invited me to a party that was happening in the neighborhood. I was still new to the area and didn't really know anyone that well, so I figured it would be a good place to meet some new people and start building up some friendships. I was a fairly outgoing guy, and soon enough I was hanging around and chatting to a few different crowds of people. Eventually, someone came up to me and the guys I was talking to and asked if we wanted to join them in a casual game of truth or dare, just for fun. A couple of the guys opted out, but I shrugged and thought, why not? It was just a bit of fun, and I didn't want to ruin any chances of fitting in by rejecting them. There were about seven or eight of us playing, though I think a few more people joined later on. The dare started off pretty tame. Not many people picked the truth, for which I didn't blame them. People could be nasty about what they asked, and even I didn't want to go spilling all of my secrets. So I chose Dare on my turns. The boys before dared me to drink hot chili sauce, and he rushed off to the bathroom while someone else dive-bombed the pool outside while fully clothed. My first dare was to jump off the roof of the house and into the pool below. I was quite nervous at first, since it was a pretty high roof, but everyone was looking at me expectantly, so I agreed. I went up to the second floor window and climbed out, pulling myself up onto the roof. Glad I hadn't had anything to drink that might throw off my coordination. Everyone was watching True. me, so I forced a confident smile onto my lips, gave them all a wave, and jumped. The impact jarred me a little, but it wasn't too bad. I was more bothered about being drenched than anything else, although one of the girls passed me a towel to dry off with. Relieved my turn was over, I went back to the game. Makaka. The others were drinking more and more alcohol, though, and the dare started to get more reckless. The next guy was dared to car surf on the road outside. It was dark, and he ended up falling off and scraping his elbows pretty badly. But other than Damn. that, he seemed fine, and the alcohol seemed to numb whatever pain he was feeling. I had no doubt he wouldn't be so happy in the morning, though. When it was my go, I was pretty nervous. I'd watched everyone around me consume more and more alcohol as the night progressed, dulling the sense of danger. I was tempted to choose truth, since it would probably be less risky, but I didn't want my reputation to be the college wimp, so I took the dare. Okay, we dare you to sprint into the house, blindfolded. The dare was met with a chorus of cheers from everyone but me. I felt my heart sink with dread. Blindfolded? I didn't have great coordination at the best of times, never mind when the room was full of intoxicated people, but I had no choice. When I stood up, my legs were shaking, but I quickly swallowed back my apprehension and accepted the piece of cloth held out to me, making my way outside with the group following. All you have to do is sprint straight into the house and up the stairs while wearing the blindfold. I was told again for clarification, but hearing it said out loud only made it worse. My hands wouldn't stop shaking as I tied the blindfold over my eyes, but I'm pretty sure the others were too drunk to notice or care. With the blindfold around my eyes, I could see nothing but darkness. Damn. I could hear nothing either but the thudding of my own heart, filling my ears and drowning out any other noise. Then they started counting down. My blood surged with adrenaline and dread, making me jittery. Three, two, one. I pushed off on my right foot, launching myself forward, trying to map out the front of the house in my head so that I didn't run into anything. I felt the open doorway whoosh past me, and okay. then I the first step. Without slowing my momentum, I raced up the stairs, hoping I didn't trip. And then, 
smacked face first into a wall and tumbled backwards. I remember hitting each step on the way down and everyone shouting and yelling, but after that, everything faded to black. Next thing I knew, I woke up in hospital, surrounded by the group who I was playing truth or dare with. They all looked incredibly relieved when I opened my eyes, which surprised me. I didn't think they would care that much. When I asked them what had happened, the guy who dared me in the first place stepped forward and guiltily explained how I had run into a wall and broken my nose, knocking myself out when I fell down the stairs. The broken nose was the worst of the injuries, though I did feel quite sore everywhere else. They all apologized repeatedly for what had happened, saying they shouldn't have given me such a dangerous and reckless dare to complete. But I told them it was okay. I didn't hurt myself too badly, and it was just a bit of fun in the end. Most of them ended up staying at the hospital with me until I was allowed to leave, and we all exchanged numbers. It ended up being a pretty good bonding experience, and we're True. all still close friends even now. So, I guess it all turned out well in the end, and I gained a lot of friends as a result. I've got to say though, even if you are new in town and looking to make friends, I can't say I would recommend a game of truth or dare. Hey there, my name's Maggie and I can see in the dark. Before you say anything, no, I'm not a vampire or anything like that. I'm just an ordinary girl with a little unordinary ability. You see, my birth was somewhat complicated. My mom got ill during pregnancy and there was a chance that I wasn't going to make it. In the end, I was born without further complication and my mother recovered from her sickness. But it quickly became apparent that something wasn't quite right with me. You okay. see, I was born with pretty bad eyesight. I needed glasses as soon as I was old enough to get them, to correct my vision during the day, but no matter how strong my prescription was, my eyesight was never perfect. And even with glasses, I often struggled to see clearly. It wasn't until I was a bit older that I'd realized I didn't need glasses. Wait, I just want to know how long I've been recording for. Good day, okay, no way. Seven minutes, okay. We're recording for seven minutes, okay. Glasses, to see in the dark. I had perfect vision at night, and could even see things much clearer in the dark than the ordinary person. My mom made me see a specialist after I told her, but even they were baffled. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna have timestamps for this video to where, um, yeah. Hold up my strange ability. They never knew anyone to have such perfect eyesight in the dark, while being half blind during the day. They couldn't do anything for me in the end. So, I've been stuck like this for the past 18 years. Damn. I've kept it a secret all this time, too. I was bullied by my cousin when I was younger because of it, and so I decided not to tell anyone about it for the fear of being teased again. When I started college, I thought I'd have difficulty fitting in. My bad eyesight made it difficult to engage in social events, and I was worried my secret would slip. But, I ended up meeting a really nice guy called Martin. He studied economics and he was super kind and funny, and we got along really well. We okay. started dating halfway through the first year of college. <sighs> I still hadn't told him my secret at this point because I was nervous it would ruin things. What if he made fun of me, or thought I was a freak like my cousin did? I didn't want to ruin our relationship when I really, really liked him. It was the first time I'd ever felt like this around a guy, so I kept silent. Then, one day, we were taking a walk in the park, and he said something to me about not keeping secrets. That to have a healthy relationship, you had to tell each other everything. This got me thinking, and I realized he was right. Surely, if he thought I was a freak for my ability, then he wasn't the nice guy I thought he was after all. Mm -hmm. That's when I made the decision to tell them about my blindness. We sat down on a bench in the park, and I told him everything. About my mom's illness, the complicated birth, the eye problems I had as a child, and then finally, discovering that I could see in the dark. I looked away then, worry about what I would see on his face. Disgust? Rejection? Hatred? But then he reached over and took my face in his hands, turning me to face him and told me, with complete honesty, that he thought it was amazing. I stared at him, not sure what to say. Amazing? But why? I said. I'd been scared to tell him this whole time, in case he thought I was some kind of monster. But he shook his head and told me, of course not. He could never think of me like that. If anything, he felt better in the darkness too. I was so relieved. He hadn't rejected me like I feared, and I realized that Martin really was the guy for me. Nobody else could be so understanding, so perfect. I thought 
I might actually be in love with him. Mm. I told him about my cousin too, and how he had made fun of me when I was younger because of my blindness, calling me a vampire and a freak for being able to see in the dark. When I told him, Martin's face twisted into anger, and he said I hadn't deserved to go through that, not for something that was out of my control. Then, he suggested getting revenge. I hadn't thought about doing something like that before, but thinking about all the times that my cousin had bullied me, I figured it was only what he deserved. That night, we snuck into my cousin's house through the back door. My mom had a spare key, which I had taken earlier that evening, and tiptoed up to his room. He was snoring loudly enough to cover the sound of our footsteps. I had planned to scare him by using the darkness against him, my greatest advantage. Martin drew the curtains completely over the window, dousing the room in darkness, and he unplugged the lamp by the side of his bed, while my I crept over to him and started tugging on the covers. I could see everything perfectly, including my cousin's terrified face as he woke up, feeling the covers being pulled off of his body. He called out into the dark, asking who was there, and reached for the lamp, but it wouldn't turn on. I whispered his name in a low, raspy voice, tugging again at the covers, causing him to yell in fright. That's when, out of the corner of my eye, I saw Martin squinting at the table in the corner. He was looking at my cousin's expensive watch, and I thought for a moment that he was going to pick it up. But he must have felt my eyes on him in the dark because he quickly turned away. My cousin was cowering under the covers, whimpering quietly, and I decided that we had scared him enough, crept back out of the room, having carried out our plan, and headed back home, but I couldn't stop thinking about the way Martin had looked at that watch. Martin and I began to spend a lot more time together over the next few weeks, mm. meeting up almost every day after college. That's when I started to notice his issue with money. Whenever we went to a cafe or restaurant, he always brought the cheapest thing or refused to get anything at all, saying he wasn't hungry. I hadn't thought it odd at first, but I began to notice with increasing regularity that he was reluctant to spend money. Then things escalated when he spent the night at my house. He had been over several times, but this was the first time he had slept. Everything went as normal. We stayed up late watching a movie and then headed to bed. It was the middle of the night when I heard someone moving around my room. I opened my eyes, but kept my breathing even to give the impression that I was still asleep. With perfect vision, I saw Martin tiptoeing around my room, inspecting the bookshelves and then my desk, then opening uh -huh. my drawers as quietly as he could. Finding something inside, he picked it up and slipped it into his pocket. That's when I sat up. He hadn't heard me, and he probably couldn't see very well in the dark. I used that to my advantage, getting to my feet as quickly as I could and creeping over to him. He noticed me only as I was directly behind him. But by that point, I had already grabbed his arm, making him drop whatever he was holding. He used his upper hand to thrash out in the dark, but he missed for the lack of vision. Well, I could see him perfectly. He cried out as I twisted his arm behind his back and marched him over to my desk, forcing him to sit in the chair. He then started babbling about it not being what it looked like, that he hadn't meant to do anything wrong. But mm. I ignored his excuses and demanded he tell me why he was stealing my stuff. Knowing he was at a disadvantage in the dark, he told me everything, about how he came from a poor family and was struggling with money, how he used to be in love with a rich girl from his hometown, but she would never accept him as he was because of his financial situation. I wanted to feel sorry for him, but I couldn't. He had only started dating me for my money, not because of anything else. He had lied to me. He didn't care about me at all. Despite his pleas, I ended up calling the police. I couldn't let him go knowing he was a thief. He might try this again on another girl, and I wouldn't let that happen. A few weeks later, Martin had all but slipped from my mind. I was somewhat happier in myself knowing that my night vision could mm. actually be a pretty big advantage sometimes. I even told some people at college, people who I consider my real friends, who I knew would never betray my trust like Martin, and they were totally cool with it. Everything was going fine until one day there was a knock at the door, and when I opened it, Martin was there, and he didn't look happy. Mm. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like button down below, subscribe if you're new, um, yeah, all the rest are, was premiered this week, so, so, I might, you know,
edit the edit my videos today and upload each and one of them uh tomorrow not tomorrow this week and then again streaming whatever this gets uploaded um follow me and uh yeah peace